great to see you here again. My name is Luc de Custer, founder of the Custer Academy. And in this new video, we will talk about work packages and activities. We already spoke about them in the previous video when I was looking at the work breakdown structure. But in this video, I will go a little bit deeper into these definitions. But before we continue, don't forget to click on the subscribe button, click on the bell button, and every time we have a new video, YouTube will inform you about it. So let's have a look at the definition of a work package. Work packages are at the lowest level in the decomposition of the work breakdown structure. That's what PMI defines. Now, work packages are there, they're the lowest level, but each work package is basically independent of other work packages. Every work package has a deliverable as a result. There is one owner, very important, one owner. It can be a company, can be uh, one person. It can be considered as a mini project for its owner. So when you're, for example, dealing with the central heating system, you have different items that you can further decompose that work packages or that work package into activities that you need for detailed planning. It should be according to organizational procedures and shouldn't never violate policies. It's estimated in terms of labor hours, calendar time, cost and risk. So with the work package, we can have an estimation of time, but we can also look at cost elements and risk elements. But we have to continue, we have to further decompose it to be able to plan it in our, let's say, detailed project plan. Now, the next thing is what we look at the further decomposition of the work packages. Now, they may still be too large, but in some cases, the work packages will be, let's say, like activities. We cannot decompose them further. In that case, we don't have to do it. But normally, the work packages are too large to be used in a detailed planning. And we have to decompose them to create what we call the scheduled activities, or we can just call them activities. The activities will be the basis for estimating, scheduling, executing, and monitoring and controlling. The activities are identified by a unique identification number and contain information about time, cost, predecessors, and successors. And of course, we can add there more information about who will be doing the activity. There are different possibilities of information that we can add to the activities. They are the basis for creating the detailed plan, and we will use them later when we are going to use the precedence diagramming, when you're using different ways to create a project diagram or a project schedule. Now, when we look at the activity, like I said, we have to provide a description to each activity. Now, there is for everyone a unique identification number, and we can link the activity to WBS or the organizational breakdown structure. Here we are linking the activities to the people in the organization who will be working on them. Each activity has a unique ID, and we can link it to the WBS and the OBS. The OBS is the organizational breakdown structure. So we link the activities of the WBS to the organizational structure of the organization. There is, of course, a description of the activity. We identify the deliverables, completion and success criteria, very important. We have to know when an activity is completed, when is it successfully completed, and so on. We can add there the owner and the team member if already known, or we can just say what type of person you need if they need specific certifications to work on this activity. We can identify the duration and the cost. Of course, we have to understand how many people will be working on the activities. Very important to do so because it's part of the estimation. We find planning information. We can find the start and the finish times. So once we have the schedule baseline, we can add to every activity when we plan the activity to start and we when we plan it to be finished. There may be some assumptions that we take into account that we use for the estimation and for the planning. And we can, of course, or we will 
complete the activity description sheet with the information, the actual information about time, cost, completion, and for example, also the people who will be actually working on these activities. So that was it about the work packages and activities. Don't forget to click on the subscribe button, click on the bell button, and every time we have a new video, YouTube will inform you about it. Thank you very much, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next videos. Bye-bye.